What's up guys, Steven here. Shelby. And as most of you are aware that I know you've seen all across YouTube, the FTC has decided to, well, with to better terms, screw YouTube creators by enforcing something that we have no control of, and that is kids watching our videos. And that makes it to where we, as YouTube creators, can get fined up to $42,000, which sucks, and we don't want that. We can't even afford that. So, <laughs> what we decided to do was to change our YouTube channel to a passion of ours, which, Shelby, what are we doing today? Today, we are going to give you our top 10 favorite horror movies of the past decade. Oh, yeah. So, uh, before we get into that, make sure to subscribe to our channel and also leave comments below of your top 10 horror movies of the decade. Don't forget to like the video as well and let's get started. And to start off my top 10 list, I have Halloween at number 10, the one that came out in 2018. I am a huge, huge Michael Myers fan. He is my favorite serial killer. I'm wearing him on my shirt right now, so that doesn't say anything. I don't know what does. Um, I feel like I have this movie at number 10 because it wasn't like my favorite favorite, but I love anything Halloween related and I just can't not put Halloween on this list. So that is exactly why I have it at number 10. At number 9, I have The Conjuring that came out in 2013. I have this movie at number 9 because when I saw it in theaters, I was like, holy crap, this is a really good movie. And it just kicked off all of these Annabelle movies, which are hit or miss, which is why none of them are on this list. But I wanted to add The Conjuring because it did start this really awesome franchise that I just kind of fell in love with. And when I saw it in theaters, I was like, dang. Horror movies are going to be really good this decade, and they definitely are because it was really hard to make this list, and it was hard to select this for number 9, but it's number 9, and let's move on to number 8! And for number 8, I have Sinister. The movie came out in 2012, and when I saw this movie in theaters, I ended up seeing it about four times in theaters. That's how much I liked it, and I just couldn't not include this on the list. It reminded me of how much I really do love horror movies. I thought this movie had a great story. I love the plot. I love the acting. Everything about it just really caught my attention, obviously, because I saw it in theaters four times, and that is why that is on this list. At number seven, I have The Babadook, which came out in 2014, and I watched this movie because of all the hype that I saw about it on social media. A lot of people were saying how great it was, and so I checked this movie out, and wow. I love how deep this movie gets. After I watched it, I did some research on it and I fell in love with it even more. And that's one thing that I typically do with horror movies is I like to look even further into what the movie is about because nowadays horror movies have a lot that go on behind the scenes or there's a deeper meaning and I want to make sure that I get the full story and what the director was going for with this movie and in just horror movies in general. So after I did my research on this movie, I fell in love with it even more and I love, love, love how dark and deep this movie is. And that is why I have it at number seven. At number six, I have The Ritual, which came out in 2017. I saw this uh, because Netflix suggested it for me and I was like, you know what, why not? Let's watch it. And this is a movie I ended up recommending to so many people. I rewatched it with a lot of my friends. I've seen it about three or four times and I feel like the story just gets better each time I watch it. I do think that is my own personal opinion. I did see a lot of people saying that they didn't like this movie, but I like the overall pacing of it. It just builds up and builds up and builds up, and then you have the very end, and then I just liked the pacing of this movie. I liked the story, and I liked the character development. I think that's what got me the most with this movie is the character development, and that is why I recommend it to a lot of people. I'm really curious to know if you like this movie though, because I did hear a lot of mixed reviews and I have it kind of in the middle of my list, so give me your thoughts on that one. And at number five, I have Hereditary, which came out in 2018. This movie, whew, I love all the detail that they put into this movie. 
That is one thing that I love about horror movies is when they put a lot of detail into it and you have to pay attention to the background. It keeps my mind focused and guessing and I don't tend to wander off, I don't tend to doze off. I didn't do that with this movie because of all the detail that they included with it. I know some people say that this isn't really a horror movie, but I really think that it is. It's just a different kind of horror movie and I like movies like Hereditary. I liked the way that it ended and it's just one of those movies where I ended up seeing twice in theaters and I want to own it on DVD. I haven't bought it yet, probably should, but it is one of my favorites and that is why it is on this list. At number four, we have a newer movie. It's Ready or Not. It came out this year and Steven and I actually saw a pre-screening of it and we have a review of it, which you can check out at another time. But I really liked this movie because of the acting in it, the humor came in at the right time, it was just a bloody, gory, good time, and I like horror movies that have a lot of gore in it because sometimes, like, that's just what I'm in the mood for, and this movie delivered with the gore aspect of it, as well as just the script writing, the overall story, the plot twist at the very end, loved it, and overall, just a very solid movie. And we are finally to my top three, the big three the three that really caught my attention this decade. At number three, I have Us, which came out earlier this year. I loved just everything about this movie. Jordan Peele did an amazing job with this movie, and I like that there wasn't any like super really well-known actors. I know a couple of them were in Black Panther, um, so you may recognize them from you know that movie, but in general, I liked the cast for this, and I feel like if there had been bigger, like well-known actors in this, it would have taken away from the movie. And yeah, anyways, I like the acting. I love the way that the movie panned out. I liked how you had to pay attention to detail a little bit. The movie kept you thinking, and if you've seen Get Out, you probably like this movie. It was really tough for me to decide between the two because I did like both. But I ended up putting us at number three, and that is why it is one of my top three. At number two, we have Deathgasm. That movie came out in 2015. I can't believe it's been that long. <laughs> I remember first hearing about this movie when it was showcased at South by Southwest during the film festival, and Metal Sucks had tweeted about it saying how good this movie was. And it's really hard to get a very good opinion or positive review from Metal Sucks. If you're a metalhead, you know all about that. So the fact that they gave it such a good rating, I was like, okay, I'm gonna check this movie out. And I searched the deep, dark depths of the internet to find this movie because it hadn't come out officially yet. It had only been showcased at the South by Film Festival, but I found the movie, I watched it, I fell in love with it. I love this movie. It is everything that a metalhead has ever wanted in a movie. You can definitely tell that the directors did their research, they know about metal because of all the metal references that they included into this movie. The acting was great, the soundtrack was great, if you like gore, this movie is for you. I loved the gory aspects of it. There was some comical pieces to the movie as well, and overall this is one of my all-time favorite movies. Not even just like for horror movies, this is one of my all-time favorite movies. I really, really like it. I'm super excited for Deathgasm 2. Apparently the second one is going to be even more gory within the first 10 minutes than the entire film of Deathgasm, so I'm really curious to see how that goes. Uh, but yeah, I love this movie. Highly recommend it, especially if you're a metalhead and you hadn't seen it yet. Check it out. And we are finally at my number one movie. The number one horror movie of the decade for me is, drum roll please, Split. I really like this movie. I love the M. Night movies in general. He's just phenomenal. I like the plot twist with this movie. I thought it was fantastic. It kept me on my toes the entire movie. Like I was like clenching the seat, like just, wanting to know what was going to happen next. And I ended up seeing this movie quite a few times in theaters as well. And, ah! okay, anyways, that's essentially how I feel because I can't even put into words how I feel about this movie. It was just so good. All right, guys, so here is my top 10 and kicking off my top 10 at number 10 is Eli. That just came out this year on Netflix and holy crap. I can't really say too much about this movie because even telling you the genre of the movie 
is a spoiler because what they do with this is they transcend that genre by making something completely different happen that you would not expect and I love that about this movie. So that's why it starts off as my number 10. Go watch it! Coming in at number 9 is Ouija Origins of Evil. Yes, the second one that's a prequel to the first one because the first one was shit and it does not exist. It does not exist. We don't even talk about that movie. Ouija Origins of Evil, however, is fantastic. It takes place in the 1970s and it feels like it to the point to where it even has the cigarette markings in the corner that shows you when uh, a scene is about to change. Super awesome, and if you're a fan film, you'll get it. But I love this movie. Annabelle did the same thing that this movie did, which made me upset because we should have got Annabelle Creation first, but we got Annabelle first, and Creation, it ties into Annabelle, it ties into Conjuring, and then it just, it goes, it's so, it's everywhere. But it is prequels, and prequels, and prequels, but these are one times where the prequels actually work better than the first movies. Origins of Evil is awesome. Go check it out. That's my number nine. Coming in at number eight is Crawl. Crawl came out earlier this year in the summer and it was awesome. The reason why this one is my number eight is because this film was on a super low budget. It took place in one general area and it made you feel super claustrophobic and, and it dealt with only a daughter and a father and it the reason why it's my number eight also is because they did try to add a little bit of family dynamic in there to make you care more about the characters which sort of works but sort of doesn't but overall the title of the film it, it, it's specific because the movie takes place in a crawl space until they can get out of the crawl space but Either way, I really enjoyed it. This was a huge surprise to me, like for the summer. It was a huge surprise, I really liked it. So guys, if you have not seen Crawl, go ahead and see Crawl. Definitely my number eight. Number seven is The Autopsy of Jane Doe. I saw this movie on Netflix for the first time and it's an IFC midnight film. IFC usually drops good movies. Sometimes they have some iffy movies, but I can tell you that Two of their films are on my list, and I can't really help it. One is on this one, another one is on my honorable mentions, which me and Shelby will get to later on. But, oh my god, this movie, I did not see where it was going. And I could tell it was gonna get awkward, I could tell it was gonna get uh, intense and just weird, but it really mentally messes with you. And that's what I really like about this movie, because it all takes place, again, in one small area and it didn't cost a lot to make the special effects were pretty dope the scares were awesome the actors were fantastic if you've not seen the autopsy of jane doe yet you need to go see that movie my number seven so my number six was shelby's number four and that is ready or not so like shelby said we went and saw this movie at a pre-screening and we just fell in love with this movie. We were laughing hard at it. It had those jump scares in it. It had you just on the edge of your seat and you loved every second that you were following these characters. Like the family, they were fantastic. They were hilarious. Like I can't, I can't even. And the twist, the twist was freaking great. Like I bought the movie recently, thankfully, because I just love this movie and I will definitely watch it over and over and over again. Another big surprise because before Ready or Not, uh, another video, uh, another game-based movie that we had was Truth or Dare and that was nowhere near as good as Ready or Not. So if you have not seen this movie yet, go and see it. My number six, Shelby's number four, it's on our top list for the decade, so if that's not saying something, I don't know what is. Facts! All right, and coming in at number five is probably one of the most divisive movies that I can really say because there's a lot of people that hated the movie because they didn't understand it, and then there's a lot of people that loved the movie because they fully understood it. I mean, there's no other way to say it. And that is The Witch. This movie is freaking phenomenal. 
the cinematography is gorgeous. Like, I have a headcanon for this movie to where if you've seen it, and of course if you've seen the autopsy of Jane Doe, I kind of put them together uh, in my head because of the ending of the movie and finding out what the movie is about and then going to the autopsy of Jane Doe and finding out actually what's going on in the movie. It's a weird headcanon and I can't get it out of my head but I love it because I will always watch these movies back to back. But either way, The Witch is just an awesome movie. The other thing I like about the movie as well is even though it is an extremely slow burn, it keeps you engaged. Like, there's just so many different things that are going on in this film that you have to pay attention to. From the dynamic of our main character's family and, and the first death that happens in it to just everything that's leading her to on this journey to where she goes. And seeing that goat for the first time, that was actually freaky. So, yeah, this movie was just on another level. And I think it was the best movie of that year, at least for me, that it came out. So, yeah. And my number four. You knew it was on this list. Ironically enough, I have this one on my list. Shelby had the other one on her list. But it's Get Out. Get Out was awesome. First off, let's 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 talk about um, this whole thing. You had the main character's best friend, who is a comedian in real life, who is being us. In the, in the audience telling him he is an idiot <laughs> for going out there being spending time with his girlfriend's family because they didn't think it happened bad shit's gonna happen it is and he is like he's us we're just telling him and I'm sitting when I first saw this movie I am sitting next to two old black women this was the most hilarious thing in my life so like I'm <laughs> sitting there and then things are just going on and they are yelling at the screen and I'm just like, this is amazing. Like I, normally I would like hate it from time to time, but to have two old black women yelling at Get Out, trying to get that fool to go home and not get sold and all this, it was great. It was great. It amplified the movie for me, but not only that, but I was able to watch the movie again without them there and still fully enjoy the movie just as much. And maybe, maybe it's because I still had them in my head a little bit. Either way, Jordan Peele came onto just this horror everything, just just this field, and brought us something we did not expect. Because Jordan Peele is known as a comedian at, from Key and Peele, and when we first heard about it, I got excited because I am an aspiring horror director. I I have things that I've written that I want to get out there, and seeing that he was able to do this. It gave me hope, especially with that and with us, two bangers of horror films that he has put out. Like, that gives me hope. And Get Out just felt so good to me. And I loved the movie. Of course, I don't go into spoiler territory because I don't know who has and who has not seen the film. But either way, oh, it was so good. Still, the comedian though, his best friend, favorite character. All right, so we're here. We are now at my top three films. Before I say anything, I am really happy to know that me and Shelby have two completely top, the different top three films. I love that because it just shows, we love the same movies, but just how it, it's different for us, how it affected us in, in any type of way. And she was surprised about certain movies that were not on my list and vice versa. It's just one of those things, but we just love the genre as a whole. But these are the top three films that meant the most to me. Coming in number three is Cabin in the Woods. This is my favorite Joss Whedon film and he is a master. The reason why I love this film is because it scares you in a completely different way. You think that it is a teen slasher film, when in reality, it is not. There's so many things in this movie that you have to pay attention to, to understand this film. And if you do, then you're like me, and you will get frightened the moment you realize exactly 
what is going on. My favorite character in this movie is the stoner. And at the same time, I just, I just enjoyed how they manipulated people in this film because this movie is just a complete manipulation and you'll understand that once you see more and more of the film and it's genius like I can't find anything wrong with this movie at all and the one last thing I want to say about this is there's an actress that shows up at the end of this movie that is not anywhere else in this film and when she shows up for me it makes sense because anytime she shows up in anything I watch shit is going down in the worst way possible. I don't know why it always happens with her, but it does. And I'm not gonna name who it is, because to me, that is a spoiler, because I had no idea she was in this movie until she showed up at the end. Because they never even advertised that she was in this movie. So that was, that was pretty cool. But yeah, Cabin in the Woods is my number three. All right, so my number two is Don't Breathe. This movie, I did not expect at all to be the way that it was. It was an adrenaline rush like no other. Like straight up, I just could not stop. I was on the edge of my seat. I was wondering what was gonna happen next every, just every second. Once a certain thing happens, the movie just takes off and it does not stop. It just doesn't stop. And I really want a part two. And I don't remember if they said they were gonna make a part two or not to this movie, but I really want a part two because it was just heart, heart going, going, going. You just, there was no rest. And I love that about certain films. This movie, I can watch this over and over again and still get the same feeling. Even though I've seen it before, I like to put myself in characters' shoes, basically, and just feel what they're feeling. And that's not always a good thing because sometimes you won't be able to really sleep. Yeah. And here it is, my number one. It's It Chapter One. It Chapter One is my number one movie of the decade. And here's the reason why. I remember watching the original one way back when uh and it was fine the one thing i did not like about that was the fact that they put both of the kids stories and the adult stories together and it just felt weird i mean it was a fine movie the actors were great and then that's that's what not but when they said they were making it chapter one again at the at the time it was just it it didn't even say it was gonna be chapter one it just said it was gonna be it and i was like oh Dope, this is gonna be cool. I hope it's gonna be a little bit different. And boy, was it. Like, the kids that they got were fantastic. And not only that, but the way that they shot this film was more so about the kids being afraid of the world than afraid of Pennywise at this time, which I really liked. Like, there was a whole twist of horror when you were around the parents or around school or any of that. So, really, you're seeing this world out the eyes of a child throughout this entire movie. And Pennywise, he was here and there in the movie, and it didn't take that much... He, he didn't take that much time on the screen with it. And I didn't mind that at all because this movie focused on them as kids. It was awesome. This movie was perfect. I mean... This movie was 100% on Rotten Tomatoes for a long time and it made so much money and no one saw that coming. It was like the Stephen King renaissance at this time because we had got Dark Tower the same year early on and then we got It Chapter 1 and holy shit, I jumped. I definitely jumped at the garage scene when they're in there and then Pennywise jumps out of the screen. No, I didn't like that. I, I was not for it. And movies don't normally get me to jump like that or yelp like that. Doesn't really happen. But it happened with this one. I yelped real loud. I was that, I was that guy. It was great. I'm so glad I wasn't holding anything when it happened. But either way, the movie, it ended perfectly. It felt more to the book than the TV movie did, and I just, I just, I just loved it. 
I couldn't, uh, there's, I saw this movie five times in theaters. Five times in theaters. I could not stop. I love this movie. And I, at the moment that it came out, I ended up buying it. I had to. Like, it was just great. So, was this movie perfect to me? Yeah. Yeah, it was perfect to me. And that's why it's my number one. All right, so here we are, our honorable mentions for the decade. And these movies, I know meant a lot to us, but they just didn't hit our top 10, but they're still amazing and we have to give their shout out. So, uh, Shelby's gonna read off her four, me too, but we're gonna go back and forth with it. We just wanted to do it both together on the screen. And uh, of course, as well, like we said before, let us know in the comments below your top 10, and if you have honorable, honorable mentions as well, uh, do that too. So, uh, Shelby, what is your number four? So, my number four for honorable mentions is Tusk. That is a weird movie. I actually don't like this movie, but it's on my honorable mentions because it did its job. It makes you feel uncomfortable as hell. <laughs> And I haven't seen Haley Joel Osment in a movie in a really long time, so it was great to see him in this movie. It is a slightly older movie. I believe it came out in 2014. Um, we also have Justin Long in it. Um, I believe Johnny Depp is in it. Um, his daughter is for sure in it. There's a spinoff movie for that, um, her, for her role. I haven't seen that. I hear it's kind of weird. Don't watch that. Um, all in all, Tusk. Very uncomfortable movie. The way that it ends. Oh, I can't. I'm done talking about this movie. <laughs> Alright, well, my number four started out on the internet as a short. And it became a huge film which did well in theaters and I liked it as well. And that is Lights Out. I remember watching the short online of the woman that was uh, getting out of bed and going off, going to turn off the light. And every time, every time she did, the uh, there was a figure that would show up and she turns on the light and it would disappear. And then back and forth, it would constantly do that. And I was like, that's that's so simple, but it's so uncomfortable. And it's just like, I'm getting goosebumps now. Like, look at that. Like, I can see them, he like, ain't lying. <laughs> Like, it was uncomfortable, and so, when they said they were going to make it into an actual film, I was kind of nervous about that, because I was like, well, how are you going to turn this into a movie? And then, you see the first scene of the film, and you're like, oh, I'm in. I'm in for a ride. And so, that's why I had to, I had to put number four for Lights Out. And, we are on to our number threes. Y'all are going to give me a lot of shit for this, I already know it, and I don't care. My number three is Bird Box. I know, I'm letting you have your moment for a second. <laughs> Technically, the book came out before A Quiet Place, so idea was original compared to A Quiet Place, and I get that it's kinda different, kinda. I like both movies, I'll leave it at that. Um, but I liked Bird Box a little bit more. I think it was really neat to see Sandra Bullock in a role like this. It was a different kind of horror, um, it's one that hasn't really been done that I can think of aside from A Quiet Place and I really really like the way that the movie ended. I like how the monster is kind of open-ended, um, open to interpretation. I've seen a lot of reviews and breakdowns of this movie and I like that um, it actually goes into HP Lovecraft a little bit, which you're probably like, how? Search on YouTube, there's a lot of um, just backstory and breakdowns of this movie and that's what I liked about it. That's fair. That's fair. My number three is another game-based horror film. Uh, and that's Would You Rather. That is the other one I said as IFC Midnight uh, horror film that I just I fell in love with because it took the concept of uh, a simple party game and just fucked it up on another level that dealt with a lot of money, a rich family, and trying to survive. Like, I think survival horror movies I really enjoy because they keep it interesting. And if you use a concept like Would You Rather in there, like with Ready or Not, mm -hmm. it, it will just kind of, it will really drag you in. 
And so, that's, I don't have too much to say about it because <clears throat> you have to watch it to understand why I can't say too much because it can be a spoiler if I go beyond that. But yeah, Would You Rather is definitely my number three honorable mention. I can see why that is his honorable honorable mention because I too really liked that movie. It's not on my honorable mention or list at all, but it was a very good movie. Um, for number two, for me, I have The Woman in Black. It was very refreshing to see Daniel Radcliffe in a completely different type of movie. We were so used to seeing him as Harry Potter for so long. And I really was <coughs> taken back by like how awesome his acting was in this movie. When I saw this movie, I saw it in theaters and it was right when I was about to leave theaters. Uh, my friend and I were the only two people in the entire theater and we're watching this. And there was a part of the movie that had us like legit scream and we like clinged on to each other. <laughs> and um, I liked that the movie was able to do that for me. I actually own this one on DVD. It's one of my favorites and uh, just wasn't enough to make it onto my actual top 10. And my number two is a movie that I mentioned earlier on when I was talking about Ouija Origins of Evil, and that is Annabelle Creation. So, was I super iffy about going into this movie after the first Annabelle? Absolutely. Was I super surprised once I came out of that movie? Absolutely. Like, I think Annabelle put the bar so low that oh, anything that could be at least a percent better than Annabelle, I would like it. But Annabelle Creation was just on another level of just holy crap. Like the story that they did for how the doll was created and all these other things and and how it tied in to Annabelle, which I was okay with. I feel like they could have just did Annabelle Creation and it took out every part of Annabelle except the part that ties into <laughs> and two, like I, they they could have done that, and then that would have been the perfect film to end off to tie into the Conjuring. It would have been awesome, but they didn't. But that's okay because they gave us Animal Creation, and I absolutely adored the movie. There is one thing I will say about this movie. Um, there's a song that plays that will haunt you forever. And I called it because it did. And it's that stupid Sunshine, You Are My Sunshine song. And it just... <sighs> oh. Anyway, there's that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah there's that. Um, <laughs> I think it's funny because I feel like the Conjuring and Annabelle movies have been brought up a lot throughout this review. As I mentioned, the movies that came after The Conjuring <laughs> Are hit or miss depending on which one we're talking about which is why none of the ones after made it to my list not even my honorable mentions uh, but I think The Conjuring set up um, a good foundation for some of the movies that came after yeah. really actually just that one <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> to be honest because <laughs> like and Book of Stone was okay the nun was just yeah. not uh, <laughs> um, yeah. that's about it pretty much yeah. it's about it I mean Conjuring 2 was fantastic but it's still the Conjuring films yeah. We're talking about the movies that came out of... The Annabelle ones. The Annabelle movies, yeah. Um, mm. Anyways. Yep. Alright, our number ones. Uh, my number one was on Steven's top ten list. And for a lot of the reasons that he mentioned, um, it's The Witch. I was a little late to the game. I just watched The Witch this year, actually. Uh, but I heard a lot of talk about it. Um, one of my coworkers at work has um, a witch a witch the witch uh, movie poster as like a screensaver and I always saw it and I was like I want to watch that so I, I saw those on Netflix I watched it and the first time I watched it I felt like I was missing something and I think it's one of those movies where as Steven mentioned there's so much going on in the background and a lot that like a lot of detail you have to pay attention to this might take you a couple of times to watch it to really get the full effect for it um, I watched a breakdown of this movie as well. As I mentioned, after I watch a horror movie, I like to dive into some research on it to really get into the mind of the director or what the movie was about or, um, you know, stuff like that. I love when horror movies add in theological aspects into it. 
Um, I like being able to dig in and like really do that research, whether it's philosophical, political, uh, religious, whatever. I love that I can go in and do research and do a deep dive onto a movie. I, I'm a history nerd. I love research. I love how much they put into this movie and it was really, really hard to not include it in my top 10, which is why it's my number one for honorable mention. <laughs> <laughs> and my honorable mention of no my number one, it was on Shelby's top 10 and that is Us. That movie just, again, did so much for me. Also, it recreated, um, I got five on it, and I absolutely loved it. There's actually a scene in there, a dance scene, that was just perfect. And, I mean, can you imagine living in a world full of doppelgangers that, that were like, that just, that did everything that, like, that you did, basically? Like, it's weird. It is. It's, it's, it's weird. It's creepy feeling. And, and it's just like, okay, um... So how do we know this is not actually happening? I think that's what it is, is about Jordan Peele's movies, is there are concepts that could actually be happening, which is what makes them scary. They're not too far out there. We just, we just don't know. Like, and that's what makes it a, a scary film. And that's, again, another reason why I look up to him. He's just absolutely amazing. But yes, Us is my number one honorable mention. And that was just, that was, that was cool. It was a good movie. I'm yeah. really excited to see what Jordan Peele has in store for us in the future. Uh, I'm loving his horror movies so far. Um, yeah, and I want to point out that if you know me in real life, which most of you probably don't, but if you do, I'm a huge Stephen King fan and I didn't have a single Stephen King movie on my list and that is because I wanted to do a separate video just dedicated to Stephen King movies. It's not that I hated It or uh, Doctor Sleep or Pet Cemetery or any of the movies like that came out within the past decade that were Stephen King. Um, I just want to dedicate a very specific video to that because of how much I love Stephen King and his writing and a lot of the movies that were adaptations of his books. So. Don't hate me in the comments for that. <laughs> <laughs> but guys, thank you for sticking with us throughout this long video of our top 10. And of course, we cannot wait to show you what we're doing with uh, our horror stuff. Also, something that we wanted you guys to know, we're not going to stop reacting to like certain music or any of that. That's going to still be there. But all of our other game reactions or streaming or other reviews is going to actually be moving over to Twitch. Yes. So, um, we will be putting in the, our description our Twitch. It's just starting up, so we don't have really too many followers on there. But if you are on Twitch, go ahead and go over there and give us a uh, follow on that yeah. so and to quickly piggyback off of that we are going to pack south next month if you're going to be there let us know we'd love to meet you guys um we will hopefully be getting some content for you mm -hmm. at pack south whether it be up on our channel more than likely it's going to be our twitch because we want to keep our channel more specifically for horror now uh, but we have a lot of exciting things coming your way i don't want to make this video any longer than what it already is so thank you for sticking with us to the end until next time Bye. see ya